Hi guys. So today uh, we took it outside because it's a really nice day and I want to enjoy it. So let's talk about how I started and why I started studying Japanese. So I was, when I decided that I needed to learn another language, if you don't know some more of my background where I came from and you know, I had a, I have a history coming from Brazil when I was nine years old adopted to a full um, English speaking American family so that's you know that's important to, to remember and all this but having that experience when I was around I think 2019 after I had just graduated high school I realized that I absolutely wanted to learn another language having had forgotten Portuguese I was you know I was quite ashamed of myself really to be honest it was great that I had a policy when I had first come to America, like, um, I very quickly adopted a policy of just speaking English. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't speak Portuguese, even with my siblings who also spoke Portuguese. I would refuse to speak them in anything but English. So it was a good policy as far as, you know, getting used to just doing everything in English very quickly. But, um, it wasn't a good policy for not forgetting Portuguese, guys, or not forgetting even, you know, you know, or at least for at least remaining with some vestiges of the language, which I did not. I remained with nothing, with nothing. So I had a great shame, to be honest, from the beginning. So I was always looking for a language to study. And it, to me, I always had an interest, you know, because at that time that I was growing up, there's a lot of, you know, um, my crazy you can say interesting you can say but anywhere wait there were a lot of events happening in the Middle East so I decided that I would um you know I was really interested in Arabic so I decided oh maybe I'll learn Arabic or maybe I'll learn Japanese and the real reason I had an interest in Japanese um, the main reason I'd say is because I had an interest in um, which uh, the industrialization period of Japan I always thought it really interesting that there was only one nation, actually, only one nation that without outright influence from a Western power that industrialized. And also Japan was the earliest nation outside of Europe to industrialize successfully. And it industrialized, of course, with Western influences, but it, it you know, it did it, um, it did it by its own, you know, it industrialized itself. It was never industrialization wasn't imposed upon it you know the the leaders of Japan at that time although they ch you know they changed it was a tumultuous period but you know they changed and you know moved the country in a new direction from where it had been going before that and I just found it extremely interesting that you know there was one nation that industrialized before all other non-western powers and I found that I wanted to learn more about that country so the real reason I decided on going with Japan rather than um, you know Arabic to begin with is well I mean first of all Arabic has you know there's such a wide variety of um, accents in the Arabic language there are a wide variety of countries so that was always some, you know that always left somewhat of a negative flavor in my mouth because I thought well I could decide I could decide to learn Arabic and then you know I'd have to pick a specific accent and I knew that in, in Japanese there was just a main accent there was just the Tokyo accent that was you know widely understood among all in the whole country which is quite different than the Arabic world although you know the accents are widely understood it's different it would one wouldn't say that there's a main accent accent that's just you know thought of as the standard Arabic accent it depends on the country and different things and also more than more than even that I was just way more interested in Japanese culture you know modern Japanese culture not I wouldn't even say I was overly interested in it I would just say it was more you know it was more appealing than the Arabic you know cult, well, the different cultures you would find in the different Arabic speaking countries so I, I decided on Japanese and this was when I was around 20 and the first time I actually started studying Japanese I just went 
uh, I wouldn't say I did a traditional, you know, method because I, I had from the beginning thought, oh, I'm going to study Japanese by myself. But that was before I had discovered the input method, AJAT, you know, and various other, you know, before I actually researched it, I kind of just went into Japanese, found out what is in the language. And uh, this was probably in 2008 sometime even. And then I probably learned hi uh, hiragana very badly, katakana very badly using online guides and things. And then I very quickly realized, oh, this is a terrible way to study and I was also uh, studying engineering at university at that time and I realized that if I was going to be studying engineering I couldn't I well, actually no not just engineering if I was going to be studying university I should find the most effective method to study languages you know outside of that study that was required of me so I decided to just put put lang you know put Japanese away for a while and study how to study a language. I would love to just say that I, you know, tried and put some effort into remembering the kind of, you know, the books that I read. But I remember I did a lot of research, mostly on the internet. I looked up crashing and I saw, you know, the input hypothesis. You know, you want a lot of comprehensible input. But I also knew that, you know, all the input doesn't need to be comprehensible, guys. You, you. Um, and I knew this intrins intrinsically because I like I said before I came from Brazil and when I came from Brazil I wasn't just I didn't just experience comprehensible input when I first you know when I got on the ground here in America I had you know the majority at the beginning was incomprehensible input and it slowly fills in and becomes comprehensible so I knew from the beginning that the idea of that you want to solely focus on comprehensible input was a little bit ridiculous the brain gets used to you know the sounds it hears and it, it's a language parsing you know, or it's I wouldn't say it's a language parsing machine solely but it has a language parsing machine built within the larger apparatus right guys so knowing that I knew that I just needed to set my brain to get to work on the language in general and so when I started studying Japanese I remember that when I was studying uh, English well I wasn't studying English when I was immersing in English you know naturally there were there was a lot of input so I knew that that had a place in the that had a actually major place in um, learning the language learning the Japanese language so I you know I hate to get to it this late in this video so maybe I'm gonna make an act another video after this about exactly how I learned um, you know RT or how I did RTK in a hundred days so I'm gonna go right now I'm gonna just go into why I so what or how I decided to start learning Japanese so like I said I looked into crashing I looked at uh, various other study methods AJAT you know uh, came up and how I found AJAT was actually after I had found Crashin and the input method I typed it into Google something like input method Japanese and AJAT came up and I ended up reading uh, probably the vast majority if not all of the whole site and although you know Katz's writing style was you know a little more than a little off-putting to be honest I found a lot of good information there and that's where I was introduced to RTK and I you know and this was probably still you know the first half of 2009 where I was really thinking about how I'm go because the whole plan had been to start studying Japanese in the summer you know during summer break of 2009 and it, it had already been set up that I would be going to China uh, for the fall semester of 2009 for a year of study abroad and that's what I did end up doing but I had you know I, I was going to say Japanese and Chinese at the same time which later you know I'll go into it after the RTK video is out so um, so I decided that you know I would do RTK I was pretty much convinced by cats and then I also looked up you know, Heisig or Heisig or whatever his name is, is 
I looked up his actual videos on YouTube and there were actually several where he talked about why he, um, you know, what his main goals were in making RTK. And it seemed to me that his main goals were to even the playing field between Chinese students with, with some kind of a background in kanji and the Western students. Now that I actually know Chinese to a, you know, decently proficient level for sure, I would say that's such a ridiculous idea because the background that you get from Chinese as far as understanding you know the compound words just the general meanings of the kanji in a wide variety of situations is is not you know it's not in any way able to be simulated by doing RTK however that being said it's a really great starting point of having um, you know some kind of base knowledge of the kanji as you start to see the kanji used in natural Japanese or Chinese or what you know however whatever language you may be using the kanji in so I decided I, I would study RTK in the summer after you know to, to wrap it up guys I decided I would study RTK in the summer of 2009 after um, looking into crash and the input method looking at um, AJAT, the AJAT website, and being introduced to RTK and also reading on various other sources. I remember I read widely, guys. I actually read like a couple books about language acquisition um, at that time. I don't remember the titles and I don't, and it's really not important because I, I, I felt the methods introduced in, in those books were not necessarily even uh, the, you know, they don't necessarily reflect why reflect widely on the methods I use now and I also did read some of anti moon but that was to a more limited extent um, so anyways guys I'm gonna leave it off here and I'm gonna go into the next video right now um, of why and how I did RTK in 20 days and how I did RTK 100 kanji a day turned out to be 22 days guys but how I did RTK nearly 100 kanji a day. Okay guys, I'll see you right now. We'll put both of these videos up at the same time. But let's make it two parts. Cheers.